Hey, it's been no secret over all these years, I love walleye fishing. And late last July, I desperately needed a fix. And where better to feed said fix than a place that has become one of the premier walleye fisheries in the United States, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Green Bay is a huge arm of Lake Michigan, located along the southwest coast of Michigan's Upper Peninsula and the eastern coast of Wisconsin. Approximately 120 miles long by 10 to 20 miles wide, altogether Green Bay encompasses nearly 200 square miles. Let her float. Keep going. These days, years of commercial overharvest and industrial pollution have been reversed and trophy walleye populations here are experiencing a huge upswing in the bay. In fact, many predict that the next Wisconsin state record is swimming around in Green Bay as I speak. You only tie two hooks, most of them are three. They have them three hooked, they have them two hooked, and what I found is when you hook the crawler up in the front and you have it loosely hooked in the back so that there's space, the crawler can move exactly how it wants to and expand because as you know, when you put them in the water, they get long and that allows me to have that latitude. Joining me today is my good friend and one of the nation's top walleye pros and Evan Root pro staffer, Eric Olson. Having traveled all over the country fishing competitively for walleyes, his knowledge on modern techniques makes him one of my favorite guys to fish with. It's late July, which means the bulk of the walleyes in Green Bay are now found suspended over deep water patrolling for bait fish. So to get at them, today we'll be pulling crawler harnesses behind a spread of inline planer boards. All right, so what we got is the right, actually left side board, sets like so. But what they've done is they've actually, Offshore's got a system that's actually a, a we call it a tattle flag. So when we hook this up, put the line through here, snap it down, they've got a pin so that the board can't come off. The back clip hooks on, but you hook it on with some slack in between. Now, important because you call our harness, generally the fish can bite lightly. When the crisp, when the fish hits it, I see. It's a trolling bobber. It's a piece of cake. If you've not fished this kind of a system before, what we're simply doing is using these things to get a spread. We're gonna, we can fish three rods each here in Wisconsin. So we're putting out six rods, three on each side. The front ones out here will be the furthest out and we're gonna run them at about 80 feet. All right, important setting these up too, babe, is, a, is in the harness, basically what I do is I hook three rings down from the nose so it goes right straight across the nose. And allows oh, the crawler- Let me see that. It allows the crawler to hang straight. Uh-huh. And it doesn't make the crawler spin. It'll naturally spin on its own, but you don't want to force a spin. And with the treble, because he has such a long distance, I set it up purposely that way. I go slightly behind the ring. One hook goes in the crawler and back out. And there you have your harness. That little flag just went down on me. You got it. Nice and easy. The walleye fix is starting. Okay, very small walleye. First thing, surfing walleye of Green Bay here. <laughs> now, the funny part about this is, <laughs> this is normally not a bad fish in just about any other body of water. Yeah, out here at your runt, we don't want it. Well, first blood. Not bad. Hey, I'm sorry to interrupt the action, but be sure to stick with us at Green Bay, where I promise you those big walleyes will be going on the bite. This is not minute structures like you might get in the lake where there's a little eight foot corner on a bar or something. These are big bars, big structures, a lot of sand on this side of the bay whatsoever and you need to simply cover a lot of water because the schools are like, like a pack of wolves if you will. When you get a school of walleyes, they're moving up on, uh, on a big point or a flat and just covering water looking for food and they get pretty gregarious and pretty serious about it when they really get on the feedback. So you can cover a tremendous amount more water by doing what we were doing than you can with just about anything else. Nice fish. And the left is clobbering the right. Oh, I'm maintaining your side as well, you know, just it's all the touch. Can I at least touch my fish? You want to hold fish? it? 
What's uh, uh, important here is having a good spread of lines. And when you're setting your lines out, making sure you attack several different levels. Because a lot of times you may mark the fish that are, let's say, 10 feet down and below, but because the boat will scare the fish away, you're not gonna catch that top half, or maybe that, that 14, 15 foot section, they may be spooked away as well. So we ran baits to where some of them were up a little higher in the uh, water column. It's a real simple process, but being consistent so you're not running a bunch of different weights when you're starting out is important. We don't have any funky tugging and long runs, we should be okay. Yeah, I like this wee part, amigo. This is my side of the boat and you just... No, like a vulture, go! <laughs> I've been around your kind before. <laughs> That looks like a better fish. If this is a big fish, I'm gonna not be happy with you. Taking it's just a better, rod. better, it's not big. Oh, and you got it by that other plate board. I huh? That's good. Nice, pretty Green Bay fish. This is a walleye. We got El Ropa Doggo here. Be a walleye. 10 pounds of walleye I want to see. Okay, 12 pounds. <laughs> you don't want to wish for too big, right? He hasn't made any screaming runs. That's a good sign. Whatever it is has a lot of weight. Now that might be a big cat. Let's hope it's a walleye though. That's a big fish, buddy. I know it is. Oh, it's stand deep. That, that's a walleye type situation there. Sure fighting like one. Wow. Oh, it's big, whatever it is, man. <laughs> it's a toad, you can see that. This is huge. Nice and easy. Be a walleye. Monster catfish. Oh, huge. This is ginormous. <laughs> oh. Okay, I don't... <laughs> I don't care. Wow. That was fun. Everything is suspended out here on the bait fishes, aren't they? Everything. That's a nice cat, huh? Big old fella. You don't suspect you're gonna catch a big cat like this when you're out fishing walleyes. There you go. Be a walleye. It's not a walleye. It's all messed. It's a sheephead. It is, huh? Yeah, it it just tore tons of line off. And kind of, I love this boat. Feel how stay. I mean, it's rocking and rolling out here, and we're just about as stable as we could be. Oh! Holy! Take oh, your it's tackle. a big walleye. I see that. Oh, it's a monster walleye. Hang on, Mister. Wow. This is a this is a toad. And he says, this is a sheep. I could have sworn it was. Nice looking sheep, mister. Well, you like it when they transform themselves. It's a good thing. Uh-huh. Now that is what I call a fish. That's five. That's five. Nice fish. The walleye fix is starting. Hey, and maybe you don't fish walleyes. Maybe you don't understand what we're talking about, but if you do fish walleyes, a number of times a year you gotta have your walleye fix. And when you're out in a place like Green Bay here, man, there, there are a lot of 10, 11, 12, 13 pound, 14 pound walleyes here. And buku of them from five to 10 pounds. A lot of people talk about spinner fishing and, and a lot of times spinner fishing can be pulling three ways. It can be pulling uh, bottom bouncers, but you know, the, the open water trolling that we've been doing, uh, as you can see, we're basically using inline weights. We're using something significantly different than a lot of people are used to. Usually people think of fish relating to the bottom and that's how they're gonna fish for the fish. What we're fishing is for suspended active fish and suspended schools. They're chasing bait fish. We're looking for bait fish and when that happens, we can get on them. Staying on them is the key. Fish, that's what. There's something back there. Oh yeah, there is. I'm gonna guess walleye too. Holy bucket. I'm gonna bet on this one being an eye. I would, I would go along with it. I wouldn't take the bet. <laughs> nice and easy. Oh boy, yeah. This is fish, definitely. I got the board up. And yeah, there's still a lot of weight. Holy buckets. Well, it's pulling pretty decent. Walleye. Guaranteed. Take your time. Yeah. Nice yep. walleye. walleye. Nice one. Beauteous! Hey! <laughs> and you know the good deal? What? <laughs> that was on your rod, I get to get it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Just Make don't rub it. Don't rub it in, all right? Nice fish. And as the sun slowly slides into west at oh. Green Bay, the walleyes continue their gregarious feeding frenzy. This, sir, 
has been a fun day. So what could possibly be better than fishing with a good friend who happens to be a professional walleye angler? Actually, it's tag teaming with two of them. You, Eric, Eric, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. You missed out yesterday. So today, Hugh McAloon joins Eric and I as we head back into Green Bay with the same game plan as yesterday, pulling crawler harnesses behind inline planer boards looking for big walleye. Being from Wisconsin and having fished pro walleye tournaments himself, Hughes fished these waters many times and is certainly no stranger to this technique. We're going to try something a little bit different that you know I've had a lot of good luck with on the bait through the years versus your, your typical spinner blades going with what we call it's an actual Michigan stinger spoon. It's a jigging spoon and we take the hooks off of them. You know, so there's no hook on there and you can hook that right onto a, a clevis and run it just like your, your standard spinner blades, they snap right on there. But the key is here, you see this has probably got more beads, uh, lengthened beads than you're typically going to see, but we got to make sure with that long blade that it's not covering up that top hook. You never want it to be able to come down and cover that top hook. How far out do you want these? That's about far enough on that one, babe, with these bigger rollers we have today. If we have them too far out, the line will get caught in the water and the next consecutive board can run over the line. Outside board, outside board, right here. Really nice and easy. Still there? Oh yeah. Yep. A bit like a walleye, gotta feed him that line. There you go. There's, That's a decent fish a too. Nice walleye. Mm-hmm. I don't ever like to let them get their faces out of the water. All right. It's a nice fish. Good boy, babe. You might have had something hit him. Nice fish. They're all nice fish when they bite. Oh yeah. Where are we, Eric? Where are their wee waypoints? 17 feet, as soon as we hit the 17 foot mark, boom. Outside one, outside one, you. That's a nice, that's a walleye right there. Yeah. Hugh, come on down, you're the next contestant. Slow and steady, no hurry. Never want that board jumping out of the water. This is a good walleye, boys. I always, yeah, that's like rock solid. I always play with that when I'm bringing in a good fish. The drag? Oh yeah, make sure it's where you want it at all times. We got one in the middle board, middle board, middle board. Tell you one thing, I do love the back of this boat. It gives you a lot of room to fish and see. Here he comes, Eric. Yep, I'm I seeing him. He's all yours. That's a good one. Oh, the Michigan Stinger Spoon. You start to have mass chaos, and right now we can't even get all our boards out. That's a nice bay walleye. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be a pretty nice fish, boys. Nice and easy. What I always try and do is you never want that board to come out of the water. Just bring it in nice, steady, slow, let the fish the way that board. My guess is we got a Wally. Decent? No. Unless he's just playing hooky. Oh, he is. Big fish. Oh, oh boy. It is a big, big fish. Big, big fish. Yep. Oh. Nice. There's there a big we fish. Go. That's what we're talking about. Nice fish. Not as big as I thought. Oh, that's what a big beauty. fish. That's, they're nice and fat and healthy. Yeah. It's a solid Too big walleye. big to eat, though. <laughs> Here you go, girl. Watch. This is a St. Croix planer board rod. First thing you'll notice is the telescopes because it's long. And this way you can get it into a rod box and that's nice. Outside board's got a fish. I'll get that, babe. But secondly, it's got a real light action to it, a soft action that's made for this kind of fishing. Definitely got it. Because you're taking boards off and so forth, you want a long rod like this, a soft one, where you can keep that tension on the fish even while you're monkeying with the board. As soon as that board released, your rod is up, you've still got tension go. on the fish. And, and uh, without this kind of stuff, you just go with standard walleye jigging rods or rigging rods there we go. that are not made for this kind of fishing. You're just not going to be as successful. And he scores! Eric and I have fished together for a long time, and I just truly enjoy fishing with him. He fishes like I do. I, he thinks like I, he's just constantly going and going and going. I got it. Today, I haven't caught a lot today. Here you go, babe. Throwing her back. Hugh joined us today, and Hugh and I have been friends for a long time. Give this one a little bit of a ride. Hugh's been fishing tournaments for 25 years and very much in tune with this kind of fishing as well. Let him go in the Crisco. It didn't matter whether we were baiting crawlers or, or switching planer boards or whatever it is. If anybody saw something needed to be done, we're all keeping the same goal in mind. So it was a, a, a like a machine because we were able to stay on it. Everybody was interchangeable, and that really showed up real quickly when you 
about probably a half hour into it. Being able to have other people out there that know how to do that fishing, enjoy that fishing, you really do work together. And you know, it was great with Babe and Eric because I mean, you know, Babe's probably caught uh, more walleyes than uh, everybody that came through this parking lot today in his lifetime. And you know, Eric's obviously a seasoned professional, and we had a great time. It was a blast. It was just like old home week. It's like all three of us fished together all of our lives when we're out there today, and that really makes it a lot more fun. On today's show, I primarily wanted to share two things. First, for all you walleye fishermen out there, to demonstrate a technique that anybody can use in waters close to home. Effectively fishing with planer boards is an art of sorts, but most assuredly isn't rocket science. And just as you've seen today, it's a great method for taking those otherwise tough to catch suspended monster walleyes. Secondly, I simply wanted to point out Green Bay is an extremely exciting fishery that's close to an awful lot of you watching today's show. If you're looking for a good place to go fishing, a lot of walleyes, a lot of smallmouth, big muskies, even sturgeon, how's that grab you? Largemouth bass, several other things. Green Bay, north of Green Bay, Wisconsin, the bay itself is just butt kicking. Plus, you can trailer your own boat there and there's no shortage of awesome lodges, guides, and charter operations to accommodate parties of all sizes. So for sheer numbers and trophy potential, maybe consider Green Bay as a great bet when you're planning your next trip. You know, I guess there's a third reason I went there. Like I said at the get-go, to pound some big walleyes with a couple of old friends. So I guess mission accomplished on all three counts. Hugh and Eric, thank you so much for sharing a boat with me today. You know, I absolutely love fishing with guys who love it as much as I do. Hopefully we can meet up and do it again sometime soon. I'm Babe Winkleman. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, everybody, hey, good fishing.